This is the Nordstrom store in San Francisco. It's one of 74 Nordstroms all around the country with annual sales of nearly $3.5 billion. Nordstrom's maintains an inventory of items nearly double that of the typical specialty store or department store. That means a gigantic database to keep track of inventory and sales. So when they went looking around for a computing environment, it was serious business. They looked at OS2, they looked at Unix, but they settled on Windows NT for Microsoft. Why? Well, we'll try to find out today as we try on Windows NT on this edition of the Computer Chronicles. Computer Chronicles is brought to you in part by Intel, microprocessor technology for the software of today and tomorrow. Intel, the computer inside. Additional funding is provided by the Software Publishers Association, providers of educational materials to help manage software. Don't copy that floppy. And by Hewlett Packard, personal computer division. Welcome to the Computer Chronicles. I'm Stuart Chaffee, and with me today is Mike Nash, Windows NT Product Manager with Microsoft. Mike, I have Windows 3.1 running over here on my HP Vector. You have Windows NT running over there on your machine. They look almost identical. What, what is the difference? So, at least the idea was to make them look as much the same as was possible. They both use the same familiar program manager, and in fact, a lot of the tools, like the file manager, are exactly the same. In fact, if you could launch right, that I'll on launch your machine, my file manager in 3.1, you launch yours in NT. You see, they're basically the same. You've got, I've got a few extra things that, that aren't there on Windows 3.1. For instance, I can have long file names. A file like name something like the Computer Chronicles can have a space in it mm -hmm. for whatever special characters I want to use. You'll also notice that Windows NT automatically generates a short file name so that older DOS applications yeah. can be 100% compatible on Windows NT. Windows NT is also designed to be a secure operating system, so we actually have full support to control the permissions to see who can look at a file. The Computer Chronicles plan can be viewed by anyone, but we want to make sure that all the power users have full access to this. So we'll simply go in, choose power users from the list, add them, give them full control, uh -huh. and now they can access this file in any way they want. Now, while Windows NT runs all the standard Windows applications that you'd ever want, Windows NT is designed to run more than one application at the same time. So it looked the same on the surface, but you were running all these other operations underneath. Right in the background, exactly. Windows NT is also designed to be a very manageable system. So if we actually launch the performance monitor, you'll see that I can actually look and control exactly how the system is being used. In, in this case, I'm monitoring CPU utilization in total and seeing how it's being shared between the applications and between the system. Okay, today we will look into Windows NT to see what else it can do, and we'll look at several new applications written specifically for NT to see how the NT environment improves on application performance. First, we're going to visit the Microsoft Labs up in Redmond, Washington to meet the NT development team. The Windows NT team at Microsoft's Redmond headquarters barely had time for a brief vacation before work started on product improvements. Before the next major version release, codenamed Cairo, is ready, Microsoft will release NT upgrades. We're sitting down trying to figure out how to get an update out with sort of some, some small features, uh, double space and some better networking, enterprise networking support and uh, better performance, and then figure out how to get to the next ease of use features in a seamless uh, short times period without disrupting current applications that are in progress. System engineers rebuild and test the NT operating system on a daily basis. There's an interoperability test lab where they're building connections to OS2 and Novell servers. Ongoing tests are run for software compatibility, but special emphasis is placed on hardware compatibility since NT runs on a variety of platforms. All the machines that passed the test were put on a hardware compatibility list and we had over 1,600 machines on our hardware compatibility set, which is, I believe, a, a record for any operating system. Program managers say Cairo will bring a new level of intuitive ability to NT. Cairo uh, will make it easier for people to say, just give me the, the sales data for the month of December and the system will take care of finding the data. It will also enable people to build solutions where, uh, where they can work with the data in exactly the way they want to. They don't have to worry about what application they're running in. They don't have to worry about the exact structure of the data. 
things will just flow more smoothly in the way that people want it. For the Computer Chronicles, I'm Janelle Patterson. Two of the nice features of Windows NT are portability and scalability. Here to show us what that means are Ray Court of Microsoft and also back with us Mike Nash of Microsoft. Ray, we're going to start with you and talk about portability and what does that mean? Well, what we have here is the same consistent Windows user interface, but of course when it's Windows NT that's running here and it's running on a different microprocessor chip. Alright, so what do we have over here on this NetPower PC? Well, they say that seeing is believing. If I use this little utility here, I can show you what hardware we have installed in this machine. If I choose hardware, you can see that my CPU type is actually a MIPS microprocessor. So we're not running a 486 or a Pentium here. This is a MIPS R4000, and we're running NT. Correct. What's the advantage to me, of, to me of being able to do this? The advantage of being able to do this is that you can integrate a new generation of 32-bit applications with your most popular applications, for example, like Excel, 1, 2, 3 for Windows, or WordPerfect. So I'm running, you're running 16-bit Excel up here. I'm running 16-bit Excel, and in the background, I have a 32-bit application called PV Wave, which is used to visualize data. So what I'm going to do is to hide this data here. So that's um, data coming out of Excel. This is data coming out of Excel, Excel to PV Wave, 16-bit to 32-bit, okay. and I'm going to plot that information so that we can see it in a different form. And as you can see, as the charts begin to roll out on the screen here, these are quite complex plots. So what you're able to do is use your familiar Excel, which you could have been running on in your in your 3.1 mode or whatever. With NT, you can actually talk now to this 32-bit PV Wave application. Absolutely. In essence, what you're doing here is actually using the best tools for the appropriate job. Okay, let's turn to the next platform here. You've got a digital machine, so I, I won't guess. You show me again what, okay. what CPU we're running I'll here. I'll use our little utility again, and if I uh, select the hardware option, it tells me what type of CPU I'm running. And here it says I'm running a DEC Alpha processor. Okay, so here NT is running under an Alpha chip. Correct. And show me what I can do with this. Okay, what I'm running here is Hyperion, which is a, a corporate level financial management application. And what it allows me to do is to visualize my corporation very easily, very graphically. We're using the Windows interface here. I can do things like drag and drop sections of my company. Mm -hmm. So if I say I want to move produ production from Portugal and move it to the American region, and then I can go and have a look later and see if I consolidate that information, what that means on my numbers. So if we end out here, I'll save the change to my organization. Mm -hmm. Bit of mouse problems there. And we choose consolidation. I select the total corporation here. I choose options, consolidate all, and we look down in the bottom here, and this is consolidating 12 megabytes of data, and it's finished. So you've really recalculated this gigantic spreadsheet in a couple of seconds. In a couple of seconds. Mm -hmm. on, on Windows 3.1, that would normally take several minutes. Okay. Thank you very much, Ray. Let's move along from portability to scalability and talk to Mike again. And Mike, what are you going to show us uh, about scalability then? Well, Stuart, scalability has a lot to do with uh, the way we can harness new hardware. And what I have running here is the server version of Windows NT, a product called Microsoft Windows NT Advanced Server. And Windows NT Advanced Server is much more than just a file and print server. It's actually designed to be an application server so that we can run server applications and have multiple users share information. Mm -hmm. What we're doing here is running SQL Server on a 4-CPU Compact Pro Alliant 4000. And actually, as you can see from these transaction processing numbers, we're able to deliver about 290 transactions per second. And just for reference, a mini computer does about mid, mid to high 200s and really the high end of the mini computer class. So what you're saying is using a four processor machine like this and NT at a relatively low cost, we can really get mini computer performance. Exactly. And it has a lot to do with Windows NT's ability to share the load, if you will, across the four CPUs. In fact, why don't we take a look at how we do that. In the performance monitor, I can actually monitor CPU utilization. So what I want to do is actually look at how we're sharing the load so across our four these four CPUs uh -huh. in the system. Take a look here at this histogram. What you can see is we're pretty evenly spreading so the load. So each color is representing one of the Pentium chips inside the compact. Exactly. Now, SQL Server is designed to be very easy to use as well. We want to make it possible for people that maybe don't know so much about application servers to, to use solutions based on Windows NT and SQL Server. So actually, this is the SQL Server Manager. And I can actually start and stop SQL Server using a very easy and intuitive stoplight. And as you'll see, as I double click and stop the server, it automatically will, will bring transaction here, yeah. processing 
and the CPU utilization right to zero. All right, so again, the point in scalability is NT can kind of work with the hardware it has. You crank it up here with four Pentiums, it'll crank up to take advantage of that. It could work with one, a one chip PC, et cetera. Exactly. All right, now if you're using advanced server, I take it the point is network management. And show me some of the other network management tools in NT advanced server. It's a very good point, Stuart. Really, what we're trying to do here is to do the best of what file servers and traditional PC class servers did, and really combine that with the best of what many computers and mainframes did in terms of manageability. Mm -hmm. And a big part of managing the system is managing the users that right. need to access it. Go in here and take a look at your, at your account here. We've actually created one that look at the groups that you're a member of and show that you're a member of the Computer Chronicles and Domain Users Group, but we want to make you an administrator here as well. So by simply dragging and dropping the administrator group onto your profile, I can automatically give you all the rights and privileges mm -hmm. that an administrator on the system would get. You can also look to control other parameters of your account, like the hours that you're allowed to log on to the system. And in fact, for some reason, we've disabled your ability to log on on Tuesday evenings. We want to re-enable that. Just touch the Allow box, and you automatically get the ability to uh -huh. log on at all times. What other network management features can you show me? Another important aspect of network management is the ability to manage groups of servers and workstations together from a single point of management. So we have a product here, a process here called the Server Manager, which allows us to drill down and look at any server on the system. I'll look again at this four CPU per line that we've been using today, and look and see what users are connected to it. You can see that just the administrator from the other machine is logged on here. We can look and see the share points, the files that are running on this machine and look and see all, all the shares that are allowed from this machine. I can also look to see what services are running here. And actually look to see all the applications and server-based mm -hmm. processes that are running on this machine. The next thing that's really interesting about Windows NT is something called the Event Viewer. The Microsoft Windows NT Advanced Server ships with, the, with this product that allows you to look and see all the things that have occurred on the system for as far back really as you want to keep uh -huh. the logs. So we can look and see a detailed breakdown of every instance of anything that's happened on this machine since it was first booted. All right, Mike, thank you very much. All right, as we've seen, Windows NT is not so much an upgrade for Windows 3.1 as it is a competitor for other high-end computing platforms like Unix and OS2. We talked to some users who are working on those platforms to see what they think about Windows NT. A Unix workstation gives commercial artist Lee Seiler the power he needs for the multimedia design work he does here at his Berkeley studio. Seiler developed his own computer graphics software for the Atari ST, then ported it to the Unix platform. Seiler says his own user-friendly interface running on a silicon graphics indigo gives him more power and speed than he's seen so far on any Windows NT-based system. The problem right now probably isn't NT in and of itself, but the fact is running on what I would say is a, a low horsepower hardware platform. Until um, the PCs or whatever system they're going to run this on um, gets up to the horsepower of the RISC systems that you find in uh, silicon graphics and um, in the Sun systems, they just simply don't have the power. And now with Unix vendors aiming at the desktop multimedia market, it's possible to have high power in an affordable price range. Now with technology being what it is and being able to go out and for, say, something in the neighborhood of like $5,000 indie, you can now buy a machine that is running at 135 million uh, operations a second. Unix, which required a big, powerful system just to exist, now has an ideal environment. At Fireman's Fund Insurance Headquarters in San Rafael, the system's developers prefer IBM's OS2 operating system. They've been using OS2 corporate-wide since 1989. Their decision to use OS2 and more our decision to go to client-server was based on our ability to write mission-critical applications. So we have written uh, the applications that support the underwriting in our commercial, in our personal and also in our specialty profit centers. We've also written claim adjusting applications and within the systems organization we now have all of our mainframe development enhancement actually being performed on a uh, client server basis using OS2. Fireman's Fund agents are able to issue policies, process forms and letters and automate underwriting functions from their desktop. The productivity of all divisions, including claims adjustment, has increased dramatically. A claims adjuster will have somewhere from 60 to 70 active claim files that they'll be dealing with. 
and we've taken the client-server technology, uh, OS2, and written the front-end application to our existing mainframe claims processing system to automate a lot of the workflow and procedures that a claim adjuster has to deal with. Since application programming is done on the desktop, end users are able to get involved early on in the development process. Fireman's Fund has so completely absorbed OS2 into its corporate functions, they're not looking to make a move to Windows NT. We're not seriously looking at Windows NT right now. Uh, we made the decision to go with OS2 and suffered through some of the growing pains, but now have uh, no complaint or no real reason to cause us to look otherwise. We're frankly very happy with what OS2 provides to us. For the Computer Chronicles, I'm Janelle Patterson. If you want the 32-bit speed of Windows NT, it's probably because you're interested in computation-intensive applications like graphics or CAD. So that's what we'll show you next. Helped out by Michael Gibbons of Altsys and also joining us, Glenn Burnett of Bentley Systems and Intergraph. And Michael, let's begin with you. You're with Altsys and you guys have a technology called Virtuoso, which you've then applied to the new Aldus Freehand 4.0, written specifically for NT, which is the first graphics design application for NT. Show us some of the power of running this kind of design program under NT. Okay, first of all, Stuart, it's the inspector, which gives it a very nice interface. And what we'll do is we're going to bring in some text. We have the text already in, and we're going to bring in an image. Because okay, so you're laying out an ad or something right now, Correct. Right? Okay, and you've already got some text, and you've got a headline in there. Correct. So what we'll do is we'll place a document that we've already created with freehand. Mm -hmm. And if you notice, simply by double-clicking, cursor turns into a corner icon. I'm going to scale, place and scale this accordingly. And this is a very complex document. And just in a matter of seconds, boom. Yeah. Okay, now what we'll do is we're going to open up an inspector panel again, and we're going to link the text, as you'll see here, to another container, which we've already got, and we'll go in and we'll fit the copy. So you're going to try to wrap that copy around the graphic you pulled in? Correct. Okay. And taking into account all the letter, the letter spacing, the kerning, uh, it's it's quite complex and it mm -hmm. doesn't matter seconds due to NT's speed. Sure, and there it is. And now we also have one other feature here, it's a layers feature where we have a table that we've pre-set in another program and by clicking we've got that. So in the lower right you just added a new layer to this graphic, okay. That's correct. Alright, now you've got something called multiple page technology inside here, which also is a pretty powerful tool. Show us what that is. That's the first, I guess you're the first graphics program to have this. On any platform, okay. yes, that's correct. Multiple page is going to allow you to take, for this particular company right here, we've done a page layout, now they need letterhead, business cards, and envelopes. So by simply clicking on, for instance, number two, we're going to go in, we have letterhead set up. The options button here will allow you to add pages, duplicate, or remove can also go in and see that we have a business card set here. We could duplicate this a number of times. And again, what we'll do is we'll select all, and you can see the complete layout that we mm -hmm. have here. That's a little small, but you do get the well, picture. So you can do the whole bit. Take your graphic design, put it in the ad, put it in your letterhead, put it in your business card, and so on, all using the same, the same environment. That's correct. All right, thank you very much, Michael. Thank We're going to move over here to Glenn now and take a look at another application under NT. And I guess the question for you, uh, as I had for Michael, what's the benefit? You wrote MicroStation just for NT, and what's the extra power you get out of that? Well, the extra power comes both on the front end in the speed and on the back end in the ability to, to make this software product portable to other platforms as they become available. So the advantage we saw of portability before, you write for NT, you're automatically on all these platforms. Yeah, with a, with a quick compile, you bet. All right, so show us a little bit about MicroStation and, and what some of the power of it is. Well, MicroStation is a very powerful CAD program that uses the icon capabilities of Windows NT as well as um, the ability to drag off our icons so that I can arrange my desktop to an, to an efficient method where it makes it easy for me to use or uh, users to use. Mm -hmm. I've got a design here that we call dimension driven design. Quickly I want to show you how easy it is to turn off. In this view you see all the dotted lines 
are our dimension, our construction elements that define the constraints. I just quickly turn those off globally regardless of their level. I'm going to grab all the elements on this view here and change their color graphically. I just simply go pick a color on the color palette and bingo, mm -hmm. there's our colors. Being dimension driven, I can modify the uh, dimension itself and as you see I modify the dimension the entire design changes and you'll notice it changes all in the all views the views as well. Yeah. Exactly. So that gives you the power and especially in 3D this gives you the power to, to uh, design in, in multiple views. Mm -hmm. I'm going to open a different design file. I just simply go up and MicroStation saves previous design files that I've been in. Grab another one. Grab our tags palette. Show you that we can modify existing data that's non-graphical to graphical data. So for example, this is a piece of property, the owner, the lot number, mm -hmm. and the value. I'm going to pick on the value here, and I'm going to change it from 225 to say $250,000. As soon as I do that, you'll notice over here, it will change automatically. So you can change text without affecting the graphics and getting into the graphics part of it. Right, but I'm also assigning data to these graphics. Sure for GIS, uh, Geographical mm -hmm. Information Systems okay. purposes. So what else can you do with MicroStation? Uh, I'm going to go ahead and go into one additional design file and show you the rendering power of MicroStation. And you'll see the first thing that comes up is a background bitmap. We can apply back bitmaps to, to objects, and this may be difficult to see at the moment, but we've got a architectural design here. I'm going to show you by opening up a smaller view, I'm going to render that for you and show you our capabilities view, render, you can see we have a number of different so rendering. that's the wire mesh version, you're going to render that drawing now. And I'm going to render it Fong. Okay. Okay. What you'll see is it's going to map some lights. Right now it's updating each of the individual polygons that we see in the background here. And you'll see the water in the pool mm -hmm. actually has a texture map to it. So you, you get a feel that it's actually rippling water. And we see shadows that are being cast by something that we haven't even put in there yet. Correct. <laughs> The, the calculation is done, so it's displaying the calculation that shadows are available from these light skylights that yeah. are up here. Okay. You also see the texture on the walls. We have texture mapping. Uh -huh, some sort of stucco walls we can see there. Correct, correct. And the plants that you see in the background are bitmaps with transparency that are applied to polygons that sit in the background to give your user uh, or your client the ability to see what their design is going to be like mm -hmm. even before it's, it's done. Okay. You'll also see as this window is updated back here that we have translucency. We're putting a, uh, a yeah. kind of fogged glass in there. And so the thing's fully rendered. Correct. And it took, what, a minute or something? Approximately right? a minute, yeah. Yeah, I mean, Warmer. normally you would wait a long time to see that rendering. Yes, exactly. You? We also have the ability to do um, animations. Uh -huh. I've got an animation loaded here. This is of a living room. And again, I'm just going to play that animation, and you see that we have the fan turning. You can do walkthroughs, and the shadows of the fans right. casting. Right. Exactly. Uh -huh. Exactly. So MicroStation is a very powerful CAD environment for multiple disciplines of designing. And taking advantage of the NT platform. Absolutely. All right. Thank you very much. That is our look at Windows NT. Stay tuned now for this week's Computer News on Random Access. In the Random Access file this week, lots of new products and technology announcements at Fall Comdex. We'll have a full report on this year's Comdex in an upcoming show. Apple Computer grabbed Comdex headlines with the announcement of its combination Macintosh Windows machine. The Quadra 610 DOS compatible, codenamed Houdini, will let users switch between System 7, DOS, and Windows with the touch of a hotkey. The DOS compatible Quadra will sell for about $500 more than standard Quadra 610 models. Philips Consumer Electronics says its new Brilliance 2130 monitor represents a major advancement in display technology. It's the first monitor that extends digital technology to all the internal signals governing picture performance. The Brilliance 2130 provides high contrast and brilliant colors with low image distortion. The new digital monitor is priced at $3,500 and will begin shipping in January. 
Texas Instruments has added a new color notebook to its TravelMate line. The TM4000 packs a 486DX2 processor and features a keyboard similar to a desktop computer. Prices start around $3,500. Hewlett-Packard packs a lot into its new Omnibook 425, the newest member of its Palm Top PC family. The 486-based system comes loaded with a suite of Windows applications. The Omnibook 425 weighs in at 2.9 pounds and runs on four AA batteries. The IBM PC company is aggressively marketing its PS2 server line by cutting prices by up to 26%. PS2 server prices now range from $2,800 up to $11,000. Blockbuster Video will offer CD-ROM software and hardware for rent in 50 of its Northern California stores. Blockbuster plans to take the CD-ROM rental program nationwide if it catches on during the pilot program. Compton's New Media has already signed on to offer its CD-ROM software titles for rent. And Sega says you can really get into your favorite video games with the new Activator Controller. It turns your body movements into on-screen action, allowing you to become the game character or moving object on the screen. The Activator works with all Sega Genesis games. That's it for this week's Computer Chronicles. I'm Janelle Stelson.